<laughs> New York, ladies and gentlemen, streets are jammed. My friend just called me, and he's right there with Michael Moore right now. I mean, I don't want to 10 minutes. I want to just say. tell me, and I'll, you know, I'll put it in. Okay, cool. All right, cool. That's awesome. Thanks. Michael Moore is inside there. Now we're going to answer a question. Did Michael Moore expose the truth about 9-11, or did he whitewash it? You know, George Bush has said that anybody that has any connections to al-CIA, I mean al-Qaeda, should be arrested. Well, no one has greater connections to the Saudis and the House of bin Laden than the Bushes. They've been in business together for decades. George Bush actually started his first oil company way back in 1976 with a member of the bin Laden family and with their funds. The Bushes used them to go after the Soviets back in the 1980s. And bin Laden, according to a Senate report, was actually used to attack the Serbs back in the late 1990s. So when the Serbs fought back, they could say, oh, look, see, they're a bunch of terrorists. We've got to go in and take out the Serbs. My friends, the government had complete and total prior knowledge of the horrible events that happened here. And at the bare minimum, they allowed this tragedy to take place as a pretext to scare the population into total abject fear and then submission. In his film Fahrenheit 9-11, Michael Moore doesn't even talk about things that MSNBC and the Associated Press have reported on. That Osama bin Laden's code name in the CIA was Tim Osman. That he was a CIA asset trained in the 1970s and used against the Russians in the 1980s in Afghanistan. Then, of course, he helped against the Serbs in the late 1990s. Over and over again, Osama bin Laden has been used as a tool of the U.S. government and its interest. Anytime they need to create a crisis anywhere on the planet, bin Laden comes to their rescue as the fire starter they need to create the crisis so they can offer their solution. Or why didn't he talk about the huge 9-11 truth movement that sprung up right after 9-11, made up of hundreds of the victims' families of September 11th, alleging government involvement in the attacks? Why didn't the film talk about the official U.S. government plan to carry out terror attacks in America and blame it on foreign enemies? Operation Northwoods. It even called for hijacking jets by remote control and crashing them, bombing D.C., committing sniper attacks. No, Michael Moore didn't discuss this. Something ABC News and the Baltimore Sun were willing to do, Michael Moore wouldn't get near. Or did you know that it's admitted fact that public officials, federal, state, and local across the land were called by the White House in the days before 9-11 and told not to fly to New York on the day of September 11th? Mayor Willie Brown of San Francisco was called by the White House and told don't fly to New York on the morning of September 11th. He was called September 10th. Why didn't Moore talk about this? John Ashcroft, the Attorney General, just a few weeks before September 11th, stopped flying commercial, citing a hijacker risk. Most shocking of all, the Joint Chiefs of Staff had a scheduled meeting in New York City on September 11th. But the day before, because of a, quote, warning, they canceled their trip to New York City. They even told MSNBC this. But it's still somewhat of a public secret, and Michael Moore isn't talking about it. Author Salman Rushdie was warned by the FAA not to fly to New York on the morning of September 11th as well. It was reported by the Times of London. We have the San Francisco Chronicle, MSNBC, the Associated Press reporting all of this. But still, the average American has been kept in the dark because it's never made the nightly news and it's certainly never been talked about by Michael Moore. And there was no mention of the fact that NORAD stood down for the first time in its 50-year history. To their credit, something that Michael Moore and the mainstream media did get right was that in the three days after September 11, 2001, over 160 members of Osama bin Laden's family were flown out of the country to Saudi Arabia. This at a time when all commercial and private air traffic was grounded by the Pentagon. But that wasn't the only airlift. Seymour Hersh first broke the story at the New Yorker magazine about the airlift of evil. It was then picked up by major publications, but, well, forgotten into the memory hole. At the end of the three-week-long Afghan war in Afghanistan, 8,000 Taliban and al-Qaeda leaders were loaded on U.S. government C-130s and flown out to Pakistan to safety. 
It had been their job to stir up the phony crisis in Afghanistan and then give George W. the fake victory. You see, it was a staged war. And this is one of the other big smoking guns of 9-11 government involvement that we're all supposed to forget about. Oh, the government admits they flew him out to safety, but Fox News said it was an accident. Yes, 8,000 Taliban and Al-Qaeda cream the leaders being flown out to safety. And top generals were told to release Taliban generals. They were told, let them go. And some of the generals got angry and went public. The FBI has gone public, as well as the CIA. They've even leaked the orders, like W199I, where George Bush ordered them to back off Osama bin Laden and his family. In fact, they even fired some agents that refused to follow their orders. There were red flags everywhere. Everyone knew that the attack was coming. That's why so many public officials didn't go to New York. But months before, there was the Bush administration frustrating the investigations, ordering the agents off the cases, ensuring that the attacks would go forward. Then there were the media reports by respected institutions backed up by hospital officials at the American hospital in Dubai, Pakistan, of Osama bin Laden meeting with the CIA Middle East section chief for 10 days in July of 2001, months before September 11th. The question is, what was the CIA doing meeting with Osama bin Laden? Getting their story straight? Well, look, two and a half years ago, I said that Bush was in business with the Bin Ladens. Now, FBI agents have gone on C-SPAN and said it. Okay? I mean, it was in the Miami newspapers that they were flying the Bin Ladens out. And I'd read it on my radio show, and people call it a conspiracy. It was in the Miami newspapers two days after 9-11. They got photos of them flying the Bin Ladens out of the country when you and I were not allowed to fly. Bush and his family got their first money for Bush's... Arbusto oil down in Texas from the Bin Laden family. FBI agent Robert Wright at the National Press Club went up there and said, I've been threatened with arrest. If I tell you what I know, here's a letter from the Justice Department. All I can tell you is the Bushes vacation with the Bin Ladens. How many of you know that the supposed hijackers, it turned out seven of them are still alive? That's the BBC. So there we were in New York just wanting to talk to Michael Moore and ask him, why didn't you talk about these really important issues, these central issues? And in between his bodyguards uh, coming over and shoving on us and telling us not to videotape him through the window, we began to realize that Michael Moore really does George Bush a favor. In his film, he acts like Bush is just some idiot who accidentally allowed 9-11 to happen because he was on too many vacations out fishing too much. Oh, no, that wasn't the reality. The reality is Bush and his corporate interest stood to gain from 9-11. And Michael Moore is covering up those facts. You don't, you don't want to let him eat, and once he eats, you can take his picture. Do you like your phone ringing when you're eating dinner? Why am I calling him? reality, Mr. Moore had just completed his photo op for just a few minutes marching at the head of the parade with other genuine establishment libs like Jesse Jackson. Then he ducked into the taco bar, had the general public thrown out, and began, well, gobbling. And I wonder what he was thinking while he was eating. Man, are they going to catch on to me as the hours went by? Are they going to find out that I'm really a fake and a corporate shill that flies around in a corporate jet. All those years I chased the corporate bigwigs around and was thrown out of office buildings and stood outside restaurants. And now I've become what I always said I hated. Or maybe I was always what I claimed I hated. Yes, Mr. Moore, we have nothing against you. But you made a film where you claim that you exposed George Bush. You gave him aid and comfort. You covered up the reality of premeditated involvement in 9-11 and played into that popular little folky image of Bush the idiot elf. Bush is a puppet for a hardcore global crime syndicate setting up a world government and turning America into a high-tech police state. But I guess though it won't matter to people like you. You'll have a fake war to fight while all the time you're truly covering up the real political paradigm. Big paper and all, Norwegian business there. Did he already sneak out? He's not. Out that way? He's gone. 
How many bodyguards is Michael Moore at? Uh, no, I get it. 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 I get it